money, man. Clark, how are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Monday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. Even though COVID's back up, times are crazy. It's just a crazy time. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody in social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you would like to donate, help, and support the channel. The link is in the description of all the videos. So, I'm going to talk about the last bit I got before I went to the penitentiary. So, I've been in a high-speed chase. I was driving in my buddy's mom's van. And these cops saw us, knew that we shouldn't have been driving. And it turned into a high-speed chase. I smashed a bunch of cop cars off the street, smashed into an SO gas station, got attacked by the canines, really got screwed up, got charged for a bunch of break and enters as well. I was in New Market Court, and one of the break and enters I got charged with was on the cr uh, New Market Court Crown Attorney's house. Now, at this point, I was so young, I didn't know what beanies I did. I didn't know what beanies they were charging me with. I had no idea. You know what I mean? When you're living like that, you don't know. They're just trying to tack stuff onto you. So you don't know if you're guilty for it or not. But either way, they did have me on some charges. And I was looking at fed time. So I was I was charged with dangerous operation of a motor vehicle. Flight while pursued by police. Failed to remain at the scene of an accident. Uh, assault on a peace officer, which was withdrawn. I got charged with six counts of break and enter, one of which was on a new market court crown attorney. So they brought in an outside judge, so I wasn't treated unfairly because I was in new market court. My lawyer successfully convinced this judge to send me to OCI, which I was not really in favor of, but I didn't want to go federal. You know, I, I was being told that this is really the only option to not go federal. So they had convinced me that it was like, kind of like a pen, you know, you got to relax and chill. Little did I know how deep it was. So I show up at this place. This place is in Brampton. This is the goofiest joint I've ever done time in. And I'll tell you right now, doesn't matter if you're looking at pen time, provincial time, stay away from OCI. Now I'm going to tell you about one person specific. This goofball named Justin Coombs. Now, this guy is the biggest POS that walks the planet. Now, he's not a chomo, but he is a sex offender. Now, listen to this weird story. Now, this guy just did a random break and enter. Okay, just a young guy doing break and enters to support his drug habit or whatever it was he was doing. And as he's searching this house, he realized that there's a physically disabled person in a wheelchair who was a man and for some strange reason this person decided that he was gonna rape this guy rape him now there was many many weird things that people were charged with at this place but this person I took a specific interest in making uncomfortable for the whole time I was there I spent most of the time I was there in segregation because I was constantly harassing this dude. Now, I didn't attack him because it was too obvious I would have gotten charged just the way it was there. But I harassed him relentlessly. And out of the five and a half months I think I was there, I probably spent three and a half or four months of that in segregation. Week in, day out. Week in, day out. Constantly, constantly in trouble just the way it was but i managed to finish my time there but what i would say is for anybody 
do not go to OCI. Now, when you get there, they put everybody in your dorm in a circle. It's like a Friday. It's like a circle check, okay? They go around person to person to person, and everybody says what they're charged with, what their sentence was, whether they got time, What you know, obviously they got time because they're there, uh, their probation and their conditions. So one person will be like, yeah, you know, I'm here for robbery. The next person, I'm here for drug charge. The next person, I'm here for making and distributing child pornography and all these weird charges. And, and by the time it goes around the circle, you're like, oh, why did I come here? Why did I come here? This is the worst idea. Now, at the time, I wasn't a super confrontational guy. You know, I I just came out of Tyak. Obviously, in Tyak, you have to be confrontational. But I was never that guy like that just wanted to fight, 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 fight. But I did take a personal disliking to a lot of people in this place because of what they were there for. But I do remember one store one dude specifically okay this guy is like a 50 year old dude weirdo certified creepster driving around in the white van with no windows i don't really know if that's true but i'm sure that's true now this guy was didn't rape anybody or molest anybody or do anything like that but he had sexual depravity to a point he couldn't control it and one night he decided that it would be a good idea to go to Blockbuster, roll up in the Blockbuster video. That's how you know how long ago this was. This is like 2003. Rolled up in the Blockbuster video and popped off on everybody and just went to town in the middle of a Blockbuster. <sighs> I have no idea if this place is still open. But stay away from it, you know. They don't really offer you the help that they're supposed to offer you if you're an addict, because that's why I was there, for being an addict. Care about me. You know, they didn't really care about the addicts. What they cared about was protecting the sex offenders. And I'm telling you, this place was rat haven. You talk to somebody disrespectfully, literally, talk to them disrespectfully and they would walk to the desk and you'd see them pointing at you and they'd be ratting you right out so it was honestly the worst time i've ever done in my life and believe me i've done a lot of time in the 17 years i've done i've done real bad time in terms like this i've done real good time in terms of time like mimical correctional i've done good pen time i've done bad pen time it's just this place though tops it off as the absolute worst place that I've ever done time. It's in Brampton. The facility's nice. The food is good. It's got a gym. It's a provincial place, but it's full of weirdos. This guy, Justin Coombs, actually ha was serving an eight-year federal sentence to be served in a provincial institution where he could get constant treatment for his sexual depravity. So they literally changed the rules for this guy to not only help him, but protect him. How often do you hear about them changing the rules for somebody who's a severe addict or somebody who's a violent person who's got mental health issues? Z zero. But for some reason, for these sex offenders, they bend the rules. I'm telling you, when I was in the halfway house, anytime they bring a sex offender... There's like a whole team of therapists, counselors, cops, like the amount of money that goes into letting these guys and, and bringing these guys back out, knowing they're going to reoffend time and time and time again. is just a total waste of taxpayer money. Throw away the damn key. But anyways, back to the absolute worst place I've ever done time. That is OCI. I think it's the Ontario Correctional Institute, and it is full of diddlers, Full of chomos, full of goofs, full of rats. Do not go there. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys, so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my fingers and people were never addicted again, people never did 
crime never had to do crime again had everything that they needed obviously we would do that but that's not reality life gets tough life gets hard people get addicted people have ptsd and trauma and suffer abuse and sometimes just sometimes you stop caring you stop caring about yourself you stop caring about everybody else and you can go downhill and literally hit rock bottom but i'm telling you what if you listen to these videos and you listen to what i say for the most part I was at rock bottom. You don't get much lower than smashing coke, smashing heroin in a dirty trap house, looking at your third federal sentence and not caring if you live or die. It doesn't get much lower than that. And uh, all I want to do is help people. All I want to do is inspire people to change and be better. And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. That is not the goal. It's just be better for yourself not for anybody else time to be selfish if you could please hit that like button if you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new if you could share with somebody on social media help spread the message help spread the word that would be amazing and there's a paypal option if you'd like to donate help and support the channel now obviously i recommend nobody go to the ontario correctional institute but you do you if you feel like there's opportunity for you to get better there Hey, that's on you. But me personally felt like it was a total waste of time. It was actually regressing, put me back into a more negative state of mind and into more of that bully attitude that I don't really and never really wanted to be in. But it's hard not to when you're around these kinds of people. My message is always a positive one. Don't use violence. If you can avoid that at all costs, avoid that. Stay out of trouble for you. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.